If you enjoy this video, check out one of my instruction books available on Amazon. The links are in the description. This is my latest wood model, the big tower crane. If you just want to see how it works and see it in operation, check out my other crane video. It's quite a bit shorter and it just is a demonstration. This video is going to be a bit longer and go into a lot of the details about how it's constructed and how the mechanics work. Let's start with a quick overview. The crane itself is 54 inches tall, the boom is 47 inches long, and there are about 3,000 pieces on this model. The dark wood is mostly walnut, the dowels are poplar and birch, the gears are usually made out of Baltic birch plywood, and the long flat beams of the boom are ash. The three control rings at the bottom of this crane are all large segmented gears like this. Now this gear here that I'm showing you, the light, this light one, is just a, um, this is just a test gear that I built to make sure that I could do it before I designed my whole model around building this. You can see that the ones on the actual crane are of course, you know, walnut with pieces of ash in between. This was just pine with some walnut, just as a test gear. But they all operate on this. And inside of these segmented rings is a series of gears. And you can see these vertical dowels inside the crane. Now this is what transfers the, the movement from the gears at the bottom up the tower to the boom. This is the lowest of those three rings, which controls the tower rotation. The tower rotation is geared down so that it takes three complete turns of the ring to produce one complete turn of the boom. You can see the vertical shaft there moving slowly as I turn that bottom ring. The boom will move in a full 360 degree rotation. You could just keep spinning it round and round and round. Um, I do not have room in my shop to actually do that, so we're just gonna have to settle for seeing it move back and forth a little bit here. This is the gearing on the middle control ring. This control ring controls the movement of the cable carriage and the moving counterweight. You can see the front cable carriage moving, but if you look carefully, you can also see the rear weight cage moving. Now that weight cage movement is geared down so that it moves at one quarter the speed of the cable carriage. Both the front cable carriage that you see here and the rear weight carriage are both moved by means of a spiral cut rod. This is the gearing on the top control ring, which controls the movement of the cable itself. This is actually the fastest moving of those three vertical control shafts because the spools that hold the cable are quite small. There are four cables that work in tandem to suspend this rigging cradle. We'll take a closer look at this rigging cradle in a little while. Let's say your crane is sitting on a really funny surface and it's, and it's got a lot of wobble to it here. These feet are adjustable to accommodate that. And I can turn this one on the back here. Let's just raise that up a little bit. We'll lower this one down. A little bit more. Lower this one down. There. And now, even though we're on a really weird surface because I got this thing sitting on it, it's still really stable. Now I'm up at the top of the tower here, right where the boom attaches to the tower. Now I want you to, I'm going to rotate the boom and I want you to pay close attention to what moves and what doesn't move. This segmented wheel that you see right here is another one of those segmented gears like it was at the bottom. And the entire boom is mounted onto here. This plate in here sandwiches this gear in place. Now it's allowed to rotate, it's just loose enough to rotate. But then this is what keeps the whole boom from just falling off, is that the gear is sandwiched in place. The wooden chain that you see running from the very front of the crane over the mast to the back isn't just for show. 
I built in a little ratchet mechanism so that this chain actually is used to tension the boom to keep it from any sag from developing. I always like to design my models so that I can fix them or modify them if I need to. And this one's no different in that I designed it so that I could actually pull the chain off. Just remove a pin from the back to unhook the back end and then it will pull out through the mast. And then you'll see here that the two horizontal pins that hold the mast into place can also be slid out and the whole mast removed or just tipped to one side if I need to work on the gearing inside. And this just allows us a little better look inside what's going on. This gear right here is glued to this spiral shaft. Now the spiral shaft back here is connected to the weight carriage. Now this is not the same shaft. This shaft and this shaft are not the same. This gear right here, this little one, is not glued to either of those. This is a free spinning gear. It's, it's sitting on this shaft, but it's not glued to it. So when this, tur this turns, both this gear and this gear turn, but only this one is glued to the spiral shaft. This one turns freely because this is the gear down mechanism. So when it turns, it gets geared down to here. And then this gear right here is actually glued to the spiral shaft that controls the moving weight. The cable mechanism is a little bit harder to see. If you're looking carefully, you can see this wooden chain that's right in here. And here's another quick look of that chain installed with it highlighted. But this sprocket is connected to the bottom control ring through a series of gears, which then turn this chain. Here's a little bit better view of those four spools that hold the four cables that suspend that rigging cradle. It's very important to always build adjustment points into your models especially something like this where I'm using string, in case any of those strings stretch or it winds a little funny on the spools, I have these little adjustment clips that are just tension clips like you might see on like, you know, a tent string. And those can be used to independently tension or loosen up either of the four cables that hold that. Each of these four things pop out and then you can unspool cable. And on the end of each of those is a little, uh, little clip and so I can use that to clip on and then if I ha once I have the right amount of string out I can push this back in and then it locks and it won't go any further. So each of these four pieces is independently adjustable for length so I can hook on to almost anything. Both of the rear weights, the rear weight cage here and the permanent rear weights to the left, are removable. Now this set of weights right here that you see on the very, very back of the crane is a set of permanent weights that I use just to offset the weight of the boom without any load on it at all. And this can be removed in a couple of different ways because if you ever want to transport this crane you certainly don't want to have to carry the extra weight of these things around. These metal plates do not need to be in the moving counterweight unless I'm actually lifting something. The extra weight plates are only to offset whatever load that I'm lifting. One question I always get is how do I transport this thing? Well, 
I designed it so that the boom would come off. There is a series of eight wooden screws that hold the boom onto the top of the tower. And once you unscrew those, you can just lift the boom right off. So it's much easier to carry this as two separate pieces than as one. So this allows us a good look at how that power transfers through that joint. This pin here, make sure that that boom is always put on in the exact same orientation because this, this plate is glued to the tower. The small gear controls the tower rotation and the two flanged pieces that you see there control the carriage movement and the cable. Then of course, if we take the boom and look on the underside of it, you can see that there's that rotation gear it goes right up through here and this gear engages the large gear that the boom is mounted to. And then these two flanges fit into those flanges on the top of the tower to move the cable or to move the cable carriage back and forth. You can see under here that I have, these are actual metal bearings and not just wood bearings. There was just too much friction from the weight of the boom in order to have it turn smoothly on wood bearings. So I had to use metal bearings there. And then of course these are the holes that these, uh, that these wood screws go up into. You see there's little flanges in there and these just, these will screw in, of course, and lock to that top plate of the tower. Now that I have the boom off the tower, you can tip this. See, I've got some metal plates in there, which are heavy counterweights. But we can finally look up. These are bolts which go up into the four corner tower, or the four corner columns of the tower. And I don't know if you can see in there or not. Um, I have the holes cut in the base plate just so that if I really need to get in there with a needle file or something and adjust any of the gears, if there's something sticking, I can still get in there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the big tower crane. As I mentioned at the beginning, the plans are available. It's a over a 400 page book that has all the scale drawings, pictures, and all step-by-step -step process available on Amazon.